peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother administer Talik IBNRAD. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Angel Snub Nub Set. Mm. Your brother and hopefully your friend. Tali even wrong. I want to say quite honestly, this subject is sensitive and it is emotional. But it is a warning and a message to those we know of as the Uncle Tom. A message to those of whom I call the dark European, the modern, the 2010 house Negro, the 2010 Benedict Arnold and traitors of a people who are struggling to breathe free. Not this freedom where somebody wrote it on a piece of paper talking about you have been emancipated. Not a freedom where some man can give us a freedom and if a man can give you freedom, he can take that freedom away. And the freedom he gives you, he can control. We want absolute freedom just like anybody else in this country. And if we cannot attain that, then leave us alone and allow us to do our work and talk to our people so that we may separate from those who don't want to be bothered with us. Leave us alone and let us do what we feel that we have to do as a mature people, not one who is still a child dependent on another race of people to do for us what we can do for ourselves and we have the resources. We have the power, we have the resources, we got the energy, we have the talent, but you have dark Europeans, these Uncle Tom niggas, building on a trash with their black face they come among us like snakes working in behalf of the oppressor to try to divide us and keep us from obtaining our glory because we will get the glory but they want to stay like a leech hung on to the fur of the oppressor. This is sensitive and it is emotional because the Uncle Tom the dark European is family. What? Man, ain't no Uncle Tom, no nigga, ain't no Benedict Arnold trash like that. No dark European ain't no my family. Whether you like it or not, they are family because they are still the descendants of slaves born in America. They could easily, a Uncle Tom, a house Negro, could easily be your mother, could easily be your father your brother or sister, your best friend, your grandmother, easily. It reminds me of the story of George Washington and Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold and George Washington may not have been blood brothers, but they were brothers in the founding and the building of this nation. 
All of us have a mother. All of us have a father. We have relatives. Now, if you're, if a stranger steals from you, you get angry at the stranger or whatever. If a stranger punches you in your face, kapow, you deal with that. But what if that stranger that steal from you is your mother, is your brother, your sister? What if the person that slapped you in your face in anger and hatred is your father, your uncle? Things are much different when they are your relatives because relative is part of your family. And within family, we don't expect family to hurt one another, do we? In most families, you don't expect the brother, even if the brother is wrong, the family will back them up because that's my family. A lot of people get in trouble for harboring a criminal because regardless to what this man or this woman done, that's my family. I don't want them I don't want people to put my family in jail or prison or whatever because it's family. So in family we trust. It's a hurtful thing when family hurts us. It's a hurtful thing if a woman has a boyfriend and then the boyfriend ends up sleeping with her mother because it's family or a sister or a brother. <laughs> Y'all know how it go nowadays. But that's that's family. We expect, we can expect hurt from a stranger. We can expect being mistreated from a stranger. But when it comes from our own house, you have a daughter that hates her mother. You have a son that hates his father. That's a terrible thing because this is blood. This is family. We come up out from the same womb the same connection, the same DNA, the blood that's in me is running in you. And family hurts. That's a terrible thing. So whether we like it or not, the Uncle Tom, the dark European, is family. But they have become family for some reason in their mindset. Instead of helping family, they have decided to hurt family. That's what makes them sick. And when you have a condition like that, the family becomes dysfunctional. So the black community, we suffer and have a problem with rising and becoming a better people because our family is dysfunctional. By blood or just because we come from up out of the same situation. Our family is dysfunctional. So the house Negro, the Uncle Tom, the dark European, is a result from a dysfunctional condition where in order for them to live a certain way, they will sell the rest of you out. Don't you know? And I just watched a documentary about the Revolutionary War. It was a hurtful thing for George Washington to find out that his brother in the building of this great nation, all the work they've done, it was hurtful for him to learn that Benedict Arnold became a traitor. Benedict Arnold was one of the closest generals to George Washington. But Benedict Arnold decided to betray America because, oh man, it reminds me of the, it goes back to the Bible. And I know a lot of us, we know about the Bible. Don't pretend you don't. Don't pretend you both don't because all of us, we came up, up out of Christianity. The story of Jesus and Judas you know I'm going to say that. And Judas, even though he knew Jesus was correct, he knew Jesus was a good man, he decided to sell Jesus out 
to the government for pieces of silver. So you had Benedict Arnold because he was jealous according to the story. Benedict Arnold felt as though he did not get the credit he deserved. He was looked over as far as his relationship with George Washington. So he was approached by the British or maybe, I forgot how it went, maybe he approached them. But anyway, we know that the British government, England, made him certain promises. And the glory that George Washington and America would not give him, England would give to him. <laughs> so he used his closeness, the fact that he was part of America and so close to one of the greatest generals of America, one of the greatest revolutionaries, they used Benedict Arnold against George Washington because Benedict Arnold was promised pieces of silver. Now, the House Negro, the upper time, they are not necessarily getting pieces of silver but the Caucasian racist people give them a little house in the suburbs. They are allowed to drive a Cadillac. They are allowed friendship with Caucasian people. See, you're going up in the world. Don't listen to Talit Ibn Rob. Don't listen to that Farrakhan. Don't listen to these black folks that are attempting to separate from us. They are leading you wrong. Look what I can give you. Again, I reference the Bible where Jesus went up upon the mount and the devil began to speak with Jesus. And the devil told Jesus, look at all I can give you if you deny your father and all that which he has pr promised you. I'm not making you no promise. Look what I can give unto you. And Jesus said no. But see the dark European, they have been told these stories over and over in the Bible. They've been, they know the story of Judas. They know the story of Jesus up on the mountain or the hill, however. Excuse me if I got a little wrong but I'm just not into religion like I used to be. But y'all familiar with the story. Jesus said no. But Judas said yes. And the dark European, the house Negro, the Uncle Tom, however the scripture you want to call them, they said yes. The modern 2010 Benedict Arnold, but they are still family. Benedict Arnold was George Washington's brother in arms. And he betrayed George because he was promised silver. So basically what we have, we have, you have family members. You have a family member on the run. They will sell you out to get that reward money. The same thing. And it is a hurtful thing to know that you, okay, I'm a criminal. I did wrong. I expect to be punished. But I did not expect my brother, my sister, my mother to turn me in to get reward money. Not my family, not my blood. I did not expect Benedict Arnold, who was in the meetings with me when we was crying about this oppressor, how England doing us dirty, how we are unrepresent, are un, unrepresented. <laughs> Excuse me, I get tongue-tied sometimes. We are not being treated fair by England. This man sat in the same meetings with us while we complained. Then he turns around and he sold us out. So the dark European, the Uncle Tom, have become an enemy. And in any nation, anywhere around the earth, the Benedict Arnold, the Judas, the traitor that sell out the oppressed. There is only one punishment for them. And that is death. 
Are you saying, Brother Talik, that we should go out and kill Uncle Tom's and dark Europeans? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying that that which is done, whenever a spy, a traitor to the United States or any government, whenever they are found to be a traitor to the people or to the government, the punishment is death. And death is an appropriate punishment because you, for a few pieces of silver, have sold out the want and the need of his people who have been done unjustly. Hold on, going to part two, y'all. I want to say this to the Uncle Tom, Benedict Arnold, the dark Europeans. You have been tricked by Caucasian people to do something evil against your own. You are willing to sell your own people out for a few pieces of silver while they don't do the same. Now, I have many Caucasian people that come to my channel and they try to bring me this sob story and they uh, stand up for Caucasian people. They don't like what I have to say. I make very clear the white folks or the Caucasian people that I'm talking about, I've said over and over again, the noun is Caucasian or white. The adjective is racist. I'm talking about an American. The American racist Caucasian. That's who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the United States of America. I don't know about around the world. That's not my concern at this time. My enemy, the one who is giving me problems, is the racist American Caucasian. But every day, I got some white guy. Why are you talking about white people? Why are you talking about white people? I'm talking about the racist Caucasian people. They don't want to hear it. Do you know why they still get, up, get upset? Even though, see, you're not going to win the argument with them. I might as well say all white people. They really get upset when you say all white people. But they still get upset when I say racist American Caucasian. Why? Do they keep saying you have hatred for all white people? See, the reason why they said it is because that's their family. See, you will turn your family in when they're on the run. You will, you will become a Judas and a Benedict Arnold against your people. But you see, no matter how evil, no matter how wicked George Washington was, or the ones who are part of the KKK, or those who smile in our face and stab us in the back. It don't make no difference. White people try, not all white folks, but a vast majority of them that claim they are good, but they still would defend racist American Caucasian people. Why? Because that's my family. Many of these people that we're talking about they are related to. Could be their mother, could be their father, great-grandmother, great-grandfather, however. Because family is supposed to support family. And they are willing, regardless whether family is right or wrong. But then they smile in your face. They are going to support their family when family is wrong. But then they're going to smile in your face and tell you, how wrong you are because you are pointing at the criminal and they know that their family is a criminal makes no difference see they have a loyalty and an and, and emotional connection to their relative we don't have that so since we don't have a an emotional connection to our slave ancestors or to us living today it's easy for us to sell 
each other out for some few pieces of gold and a promise of equality. Cause the don't don't get it twisted. The Uncle Tom dark European Negro know they are not equal, but it's the promise of better days. This is why you are an enemy. This is why we should reject you. And whenever any dark European calling themselves black come among us, we should get them from among us quick as possible because their intent is not to do us any good. Their intent is to protect their massa at all costs because massa has given them a few pieces of gold actually didn't even give them a, a few pieces of gold they had to earn it massa ain't gave them a damn thing but since massa didn't really get in the way and allowed them to earn the few pieces of silver then massa turned around and he promised better days you will get another black president i promise so that's that's enough for these dark European Negroes to start clapping and shouting and sell you and me out. Those of us who are the modern version of a George Washington struggling to breathe free. I want to say this to you dark European. Money. Money has done nothing to help the black community. We have lots of money. We have lots of education. You are an example of that. Religion, voting, all these avenues. We've been doing things your way. Integration. For the last almost 100 years, very close. What has these things done for the black community? It has divided us, caused more self-hatred, because making us feel more inferior, because anything we produce ain't good enough. We got to get it from somebody Caucasian. Everything we got is not good enough. So we done it your way. So don't stand up and lie like we as a people did not try. We tried it your way. Now why don't you come and join your brothers and sisters like like a George Washington instead of being a Benedict Arnold, join your brothers and sisters and try a different way and strive for a common purpose and a common goal which is either to get and gain the equality that you said that you want, if not be a man, be a woman, and seek separation and independence, get some territory in this nation or abroad. However, you need to get yours instead of being a little kid waiting for the white man to give you some scraps. You obey not one law that you created in this country. You did not create the educational system, so your baby are not taught blackness. You are not taught blackness. That's why you have no connection to your ancestors because you have a connection to the oppressor. You have no connection to your suffering. Or you don't feel nothing when the noose is around a black man's neck. You don't feel nothing. You don't care nothing about what happened to Emmett Till. You don't care nothing about what happened to Nat Turner. You don't care nothing about what happened to Marcus Garvey and all our people. You have no emotional connection. You don't even love yourself, Negro. That's how sad it is. And you would even sell out your own personal family to please this devil Caucasian rat. Don't you recognize and don't you see how sick you are? And then you're going to talk about the Bible and religion. That's your favorite thing. Dark Europeans' favorite thing. They always bring up the Bible all the time. But the Bible do not support you. Because the Bible was against a Judas. It gave us the story of Judas for a reason. And that's what you are. A damn Judas. It gave you the story of Moses. And you are not like Moses. Because Moses 
separated from the Pharaoh that which oppressed him and his people while you seek to lick somebody's backside and suck somebody's penis the oppressor of your people you are one sick puppy you are a dis dysfunctional and have become a the excellent perfect example of the ultimate slave you it's been over a hundred some years uncle tom over a hundred years house negro where is your equality you don't even talk about it because it don't exist but you so but you're here and willing to cause our deaths those of us who are in black liberation and try to get this white man to hurt us because he promised you a rose garden and the only thing in the garden if you get anything ain't no roses it's a bunch of dead ass weeds <laughs> it ain't funny though so to bring this talk to conclusion see why don't you stay out of it if you can wait on the promise of this devil this beast that's on you. Don't bring your ass to our people with your nonsense that you know is not true. Stay out of it. Don't come bothering us. But you got to. So what I'm talking about white folks. Why your Negro ass got to come and put your two cents in. The Caucasian, the racist American Caucasian people, they have NBC, ABC, CNN, they have way more avenues to express their opinion than I do. So what do you need to do? Don't talk about the white people. Don't spread the hatred. They don't need your black ass help. Actually, that's, you know, I didn't mean to say black to you because you're not black. You are dark European calling yourself black. You are an enemy to black. You are Benedict Arnold. You are Judas for a few pieces of silver and a promise of equality that will never come. And you know it, but you are a coward. That's the bottom line. You are a coward. And you have become insane due to your sick love for somebody that don't like you. They do like me. Bob and Bill and Susan and Samantha, they're my white friends. If they were your real, if they were your real white friend, they would tell you, why don't you help Brother Talib? They would tell you, why don't you help Louis Farrakhan? If they were your real friend, because if they were your real friend, your real friends want to see what is best, not for you, not just for you as an individual, but they are looking out for you and your people. So that we can attain the equality that is only promised by your oppressor. If they were your real friend. But they are not your friend. They're in the background. That's that guy. Why did that black guy talk hatred? That's what they said about George Washington and the patriots of this nation. Why do they hate England so much? They try to put this guilt trip. The oppressor always tries to put this guilt trip on those of whom they are victimizing. Why y'all hate so much? You're full of hatred. You would hate too if you was being exploited. Why did you hate England, George Washington? I hate England because I'm doing all this damn work and I'm not getting no benefit. It all goes to the mother country and then I have no say so over nothing that's our complaint we live in a nation that y'all say that we are citizens but we have no say so in nothing we are ignored we are not given the same right our unemployment is 17 percent or more white unemployment is eight percent why is black unemployment double? The average black family 
makes $20,000 less than the average white family. Where is the equality? But we paying this, the same taxes. When we go to war, the same bullet go in my brain like it do yours. But when it comes to the benefits of this nation, gained by slavery or any other matter, we don't get nothing. We are like the cow. You don't have to buy the cow because from us, you get the milk for free. It ain't happening no more. And y'all dark European Uncle Tom Benedict Arnold, your day is numbered. You better get the hell out the way. Because if you join this, you join your... So, I'm bringing a warning to those who wish to be a Benedict Arnold, a Judas, an Uncle Tom, House Negro, Dark European. I'm bringing you a warning. This is not the 1960s. You got a free pass in the 1960s and prior, even going back to slavery. No longer will you be allowed to come among us and do your evil and do your dirt and not suffer a consequence. Because this is too important. This struggle is too precious to us, too important. We must move on. And, and if it means for us to make you move out, for us to move on, then we're going to have to move you out the way. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say we're going to have to handle our business when it comes to our traitors, these Benedict Arnolds and these Judases. Now, I would suggest to you if you really feel you want to be with Caucasian people and you want to accept their promise of equality and all this nonsense, that's on you. Stay out of our business. When the white man attack us, don't you bring your nappy head ass and give your two cents. Stay out of it. Who is a dark European? Who is a house nigger? Who, who is the Uncle Tom? Who is the black Benedict Arnold, Brother Talib? Any dark person, the descendant of slaves, that is willing to actively participate in the hindrance, the progress, so that we can continue to be in this condition actively. They can talk all they want to. But when you see a black man or a black woman, actively doing things to hurt us. That's a dark European. And I want to see, I could say some things, but you don't, there's things that you don't say in the public. I've said enough that dark Europeanism, Uncle Tomism, Benedict Arnoldism, Judaism, well, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> we are no longer going to tolerate. You want to act that way? You want to become our enemy? Then we're going to have to deal with you like we, like we would deal with any Ku Klux Klan person or any other racist American Caucasian bum. So if the shoe fit, then if that's not you, you don't have to worry. Again, I am encouraging us. I want those people, because I'm pretty sure many of us have been. So, you want to know something? I've been called an Uncle Tom. <laughs> I've, been call, I've been called an Uncle Tom. But see, a real Uncle Tom actively does things to hinder the progress of what we know of as black power black liberation, black nationalism. They are like a guard dog. Every time you say something against white folks, hear that Negro ass come. I want to say this to us in my conclusion on this subject.
I don't want us to get confused in who is who. Just because a black person has some white friends and and whatever, that don't make them a traitor to us. The ones who are a traitor to us are those who actively participate. We know who is who. We'll know. And when we know, when we know who is who, don't call their names out. Don't, don't, don't call them Uncle Tom. Don't call them a Judas. Don't call them no names. Just keep quiet. Stay on down low. Don't let people know your business. See, that's the thing about us. We need to stop letting people know our business, how we thinking, how we rolling. Be nice to the Uncle Tom. See, it reminds me of this, of, of, of the koshering process. And if you're familiar with the koshering process, you take a chicken, and in the koshering process, they take the time to make to make friends with the chicken, pet the chicken, then all of a sudden, whoop, they chop the chicken's head off. That's how you have to deal with the dark European, our traitors. We know who they are. Now, in many cases, in the past, many of our people come among us as Judas, as Benedict Arnold. But once they under these teachings, hopefully they can have a change of heart. And instead of being an enemy to those who really want to be free, independent, and grown up like you claim you are, how are you going to be grown up living and begging another man in his house? You don't control nothing. But you a grown man. These dark Europeans always talk about how grown they are. You're an adult. You got the white man's name. You got the white man's religion. You're still eating slave food. You got pig foot hanging out your jaw, running pig foot juice running down your, your mouth. But you free. You're nothing but a sophisticated slave. No more, no less. Now, those of us who are in black struggle, we got problems. Because that nigga is still in us. That's why you really can't get too angry at the dark European. Not, not when they get to the point where they become a Judas. Because you got a lot of Negro niggas still in you. That's another reason why we can't get on the ball. We can't progress. We full of ego. We arrogant. We still carry self-hatred. And all these different things, just like the dark European. Except you just one step, I said one step above the dark European. And some of y'all gonna have to be dealt with too, because you have become an enemy in a different way. With your foolishness, hauling black power, and everything that you're doing, you're directing and guiding your people to destruction. But again, but again, let us not call people names. We know who they are. And when the time is right, when that name is called, then it's time for the koshering process. It's simple as that. But don't, just stay quiet. See. That's how animals do when they're dealing with things. Predators. Predators don't run around making a lot of noise. Kill the white man and duck. That ain't how predators, that's not how you hunt. That's not how you deal with your enemies. When predators are, see, we need to learn how to be, we already know what it is to be the prey. And if you notice, white folks are preying on us they're not making no big stink. They're not talking about, and the black man is, they just, they are in position of power and they just do their dirty work. They, they try to, they make you prove they are behind what's hurting you. And they know that's difficult to do. So we need to be the same way. We need to be covert. 
just like them. And shut up talking about kill whitey. Oh, the white man the devil. Just chill out. Be quiet. Just do like cats do. Put their eye on the prey. And get down low. And then creep. And before they know it, then get your claws ready. See, that's how we got to think. No longer. See, we got to be smarter now. That's what I'm trying to get us to do. I'm bringing this warning to the dark European in, in hopes that they will have a change of mind so they can see what has happened. Don't be an enemy to your family. I'm your family. I'm not your enemy. Every black person out there, we your enemy. We willing to try your way. We have tried your way. Integration, education, religion, these things have not worked, beloved. Don't sell us out. If you don't agree with us, don't fight us for them. Just stay back in the cut. Stop letting the enemy use you against your relations. We are family. We are your people. They don't do it. So we can grow strong. And I guarantee you, if you do those things, you don't have to get no promise of equality. You don't have to worry about no pieces of silver. You'll get more than that. You'll get the prestige. You'll get the equality. And see, even to white folks, allow us, not allow, get out the way. We're fighting the racist Caucasian people. If you're not our enemy, get out the way. So we know who is who. So we know who to struggle and the fight is against. And I'm telling you, when these black people rise, all that dissatisfaction in your heart, you'll see that a change, not, not, the, not the promise Obama was talking about, the real change will begin to happen. And once black people begin to experience true equality, then right behind us is the female who have also been oppressed for longer, far longer than we as a people in this nation. We need to set these women free. Set that womb free. Because from the womb comes the creativity. From out of that womb comes the answer to all our problems. From the womb is our connection to all of that. Something and see the Bible and Quran points back to the womb, not as it is taught by men who enjoy their male privilege, if we understand it. It's this is a this is a wonderful time. But just like the Bible said, it's not going to be easy. In the Revelation, I believe, it talks about Jesus coming back with a sword. A sword is used to kill people, not to slice apples. And the blood that will be shed will be so high up to a horse's bridle. So this is a fight. And you can't be scared. And you're going to have to pick sides. Either you're going to be with the oppressor, the wicked and the evil, or you're going to be with the oppressed. Of whom, if you believe in God, that's who God is on the side of. God is not on the side of the rich and the wealthy. Because they, chances are, they are on the side of the, the oppressor. That's how they gain their wealth and their prestige. They enjoy their way of life. The choice is yours. This is, this is not even about black and white. This is about good, righteous versus the unrighteous. Whose side are you going to be on? Regardless if you're black or white or you're male or female, what you want to do? Do you want the human being to continue to suffer in this condition of unequality, injustice, and evil? Or do you want humanity to finally be, be brought back in 
the balance, the woman be put back into her proper place. Everybody take their proper role and we gain the heaven and the hereafter that is described in both Bible and Quran. Your choice. Dark European. I don't want to call you names, but if you have that behavior, stop fighting against your relatives. Give us a chance so that we can gain true freedom, justice, and equality. We deserve a decent life after all the hell we've caught. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Tony, giving rock. This was and is Reality's Temple on Earth. Till next time, y'all.